uh, gearing up for November elections by making an issue out of economic hardships uh, faced by Americans. You know That's what it's all about, and they don't get it. They say we should be talking about creating jobs. What about creating some food in the bellies of children? What about paying the utility bill or the rent or keeping the lights on or keeping the place that you live warm enough while you're out looking for a job? That is part of the reality facing people across America. 81,867 individuals in my home state of Illinois lost their benefits between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, gearing up for November elections by making an issue out of economic hardships faced by Americans. In other words, instead of working on reforms that would actually help people overcome the challenges so many of them face in this economy, Democrats plan to exploit those folks for political gain. It's uh, really pretty amazing when you think about it. We're now in the sixth year, sixth year of the Obama administration. We all know the stock market's been doing great, so the richest among us are doing just fine. But what about the poor? What about working class folks? Yeah, what about folks who work in industries that liberals don't approve of, like coal? How many of these Americans have been doing well during the Obama economy? Well, record numbers of them are having a perfectly terrible time. One indicator is the growth of the food stamp program. Consider this. Since the president took office, the number of Americans who've signed up for food stamps has literally skyrocketed, skyrocketed. It's up almost. Good morning. My name is Katherine Hackett and I am from Moody's, Connecticut. I am very grateful that President Obama invited me here today in response to a letter that I wrote to him about the discontinuation of federal unemployment insurance. I am unemployed and I will be significantly affected by this decision. Job loss is devastating and I am working very hard every day to look for a position. In the interim, unemployment benefits have been absolutely essential to cover my bare necessities. I have cut expenses everywhere possible, and I am not just sitting home enjoying the good life. My cuts include heating my house to 58 degrees, wearing a hat and a coat to stay warm because oil is expensive. I have lost weight because food is expensive. As a single mother, I worked many different jobs and never asked for a handout while I raised two wonderful boys. Both of my sons are serving in the U.S. military. It was very hard for me to let one of my boys serve a year in Afghanistan, but I did, and he was proud to serve his country. I hope our leaders in Washington can find a solution to help families like mine. At this time, it is my great honor to introduce the President of the United States, President Barack Obama. Please, everybody, have a seat. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Hope you're keeping them warm. This should make things right. I'm very appreciative that they're on their way to doing just that, thanks to the bipartisan work of two senators. You had a Democrat from Rhode Island, uh, Senator Reid, and you had a conservative Republican from Nevada, Senator Hill. And despite their political differences, they worked together on a plan to extend unemployment insurance at least for three months, temporarily, while we figure out a longer-term solution. And this morning, a bipartisan majority of senators agreed to allow this common sense provision to at least move forward in the process. Now, the Senate's a complicated place, so just because they agreed 
uh, on, on this vote, uh, all they've agreed to so far is that we're actually going to be able to have a vote on it. They haven't actually passed it. So we've got to get this across the finish line without obstruction or delay, and we need the House of Representatives to be able to vote for it as well. And it's, that, that, that's, that's the bottom line. Voting for unemployment insurance helps people and creates jobs. And voting against it does not. Congress should pass this bipartisan plan right away, and I will sign it right away. And more than one million Americans across the country will feel a little hope right away. And hope is contagious. What do you think? Greg in uh, Holiday, Florida. I'm uh, sorry, hello. go ahead. You're on the there? Yeah. Um, let me explain what happened to me. Uh, my job was outsourced to uh, the Philippines in 2011. What kind, what, kind of, what kind of job was that, Greg? I worked for a telecommunications company. Okay. And uh, under the NASA agreement, the government's required to pay uh, for my college at re-education. So I've been going to college for three semesters now. And now because of the show up, I, I have one class left to graduate. I can't graduate from college now. So um, well, the government's been paying. You know, my tuition has been a big waste of time for me. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I believe they should uh, extend it. All right, Nashua, New Hampshire. Next up, the independent line. And Mark, hello there. Hi, how you doing this Do, morning? Doing fine, thank uh, you. I only have two concerns. I, I believe these people need their benefits extended. But I also believe that when the Democrats say, say that we want to pass stuff with no strings attached, that's a warning sign. I think there's enough waste in the federal government where they can offset the cost of uh, uh, the extension. And i just like to see them cut the waste. Uh, like Catherine, they're not, they're not looking for pity. They just want a shot. And they just want to feel as if... They just want to feel as if, you know what, as, as a part of this country, as a part of their communities, that if misfortune strikes, all the things that they've done in the past, all the hard work they've done raising children and paying taxes and working hard, and that that counts for something. And that folks aren't suddenly just going to dismiss their concerns, but they're going to rally behind them. That's not too much to ask. Uh, that's who we are as Americans. That's what built this country. That's what I want to promote. So thank you very much, everybody. Let's get to work. Let's get this done. I appreciate it. Emma, so when I heard that these benefits were fixing to be cut again, and I'm 61 years old, the job market here in Spruce Pine, Alabama is absolutely, I mean, in Alabama altogether, but in northwest Alabama, and especially in my small town, within a, even a 20, 25 mile radius, there are no jobs in my field. But my unemployment was not actually due to um, the job market. I mean, I'm not going to say it actually was not, but I was in a job for 13 years at a health care facility. That health care facility went bankrupt. So that is the very reason I'm unemployed. But in my age, there are very few very few jobs in my area that absolutely I'm qualified for. So I'm one of the unemployed. So this is immediate, immediate. I mean, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that my husband has a, a good job at this time. But with our age and in our economy, it is crucial, crucial for, the, for our government to come forward with this immediately. Don't wait. I'm sorry that it happened during the holidays, but do not wait on this um, vote. This is crucial. That's Chris from Alabama. So I just took the first step towards renewing unemployment benefits for 1.3 million Americans left out in the cold. Another view from Republican Congressman Tim Hulskamp from Kansas, who says that a speech doesn't create jobs, but Obama's bad policies kill jobs. Less talk, less government, more jobs. Kathleen is in Lancaster, uh, California on our Democrats' lawn. Go ahead. Yes, hi. Hi there. 
Um, same thing in Lancaster, California. It's not a big city. It's a real small city near L.A. Mm -hmm. It's a big. Same thing, going out looking for work. Um, I do go look for work and everything, and some of the uh, um, companies said, well, you're too old, you're 57, uh, you got too much experience. Uh, they don't want to hire people that have a lot of experience. They want to hire younger people, they said, to mold everybody, you know, to mold people into what they want. And what's your field, Kathleen? I can do cashiering. I can do care caregiving. I, I, I can do anything. All right. Well, final tweets here. C-SPAN chat is what we're using on Twitter. This is Michael who says, silly Republicans think only Democrats got unemployed during the uh, Bush Great Recession. One more from Ken who says, it's a scary, it's scary anytime a politician, especially Obama, says, quote, we have a lot of work to do. More freedoms going away. There are three and a half minutes remaining on the proponent side. I'd ask the senator from Rhode Island uh, under that time to yield the following question. The senator, I don't know if you were on the floor, when the Republican leader came and said he wanted to pay for the cost of these unemployment benefits by eliminating the individual mandate under the Affordable Care, which is the key element in protecting families who have children with pre-existing conditions, cancer survivors, children with diabetes, children with asthma. As I understood the Republican leader, he believes that the best way to take care of people who are unemployed and can't feed their children is to deny the protections of Affordable Care Act for those families who have children with pre-existing conditions. Would the senator from Rhode Island comment on whether that is a good trade for either side? I think it's a terrible trade because it's not just about families with children. It's about many of these working adults who, uh, if they get a pre-existing condition, they lose their coverage. It's not just a question of children. That, I think, is very, very sensitive to put a point on it. But without the, the Affordable Care Act, uh, if you get sick, you can't get coverage. The only people who can get coverage if you're middle age is if you're really healthy and you don't need it. Once you need it, the insurance companies take it away before about, uh, affordable care.